fill in the blank, you're not getting any younger. So buy an NFT. <laughs> Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. I want to talk about an interesting, confusing, popular topic that maybe you don't care anything about. And my job today, by the way, is not to convince you to care about it. I just want to talk about this topic. I want to give you knowledge that you might want to know whether you do anything with it or nothing with it. But I always find myself really trying to figure out things that just seem so unfigure outable in my head. Whenever I hear about a term or a phrase or a concept or a new emerging trend that really confuses me, I try to remove that barrier. And it's not because I wanna throw myself into that trend, but it's just because as a solopreneur, as somebody who's always been doing my own thing, I don't wanna get left behind in terms of knowledge. I don't wanna have a knowledge gap. You know, the crazy thing is like we go to, some of us go to college and we pick one topic and we become a bit of an expert in that topic, I guess. I majored in poetry and that's all we're supposed to know. That's all we're supposed to do. And we're taught that we're trained to think that way. But if you majored in something as useless as poetry, like I did, you quickly realize that getting access to information and knowledge and education is the biggest thing that can help you with your future and what you decide to do next. So I've been obsessed with this topic for a while. And because I've been obsessed with it, I've shared some information about it on social media. And some of you have been like, Jen, I don't, I don't care. I don't understand. This is like so weird. And some of you have been like, okay, this is a topic I want to explore. So that is why today we are talking about the topic of NFTs. I know some of you are rolling your eyes and some of you are thrilled, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down. And to help me do that, I have my very own NFT expert in the house literally in the house. I am bringing on my husband, Adam Kossoff. Now, by NFT expert, I mean, he is somebody who also took a huge interest in NFTs last year, so much so that he spent, I'd say, most of his free time learning NFTs, buying NFTs, caring about NFTs. And because we share a 500 square foot apartment in Brooklyn with only one door, I also sort of entered that world with him. So I have him on the show today because I want him to help describe a lot of different things about NFTs. I want us to have a conversation about both of our perspectives. And hopefully my goal is that I want to introduce some topics that honestly you might care about or you just might want to know about in the future. So I'm excited to welcome this week's guest. Welcome to the show, Adam. Hi, Jen. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, here is- I'm just a little, uh, um, uh, to be called the NFT expert when I haven't actually created my own F- NFT and sold my own NFT, I feel like I should just be asking you all the questions. Well, you have bought NFTs. I've never bought an NFT, but I have sold an sure. NFT, but we'll get there. Yeah. I wanna ask you the very first question I ask anybody on the show. That question is, Adam, how would you describe who you are and what you do to a person you just met at a party? Okay, Uh, I'm a bubbly, happy person that is very curious about new and different things on the internet and likes to explore them in many different ways. I wouldn't describe myself like that at a party, but I think I could probably, I think that fits this episode. You know, it's it's crazy because you wouldn't describe yourself like that at a party, but within one minute of a person talking to you at a party, that is what they would take from knowing you. So I do think it's a perfect example. Okay. 
I want to talk about your NFT journey, my NFT journey. But before we do that, I want to stop dropping acronyms that might mean absolutely nothing to the listeners. So let's talk about the bare minimum basics. What the heck is an NFT? What does it stand for? And what is it for a person who doesn't know? So it stands for a non-fungible token. Okay, what does that mean? Because that's equally as annoying as hearing somebody say NFT. So non-fungible means that it's a unique asset. It's one of a kind. Fungible is an asset that can be exchanged in many different ways. It's not unique. So think of Bitcoin, for example, or even like a US dollar. One is one is one is one. There's you know many different out there. They're all more or less the same. But with a non-fungible token, you have something that is unique. And then the token side of it means that it is um, available, say on the blockchain, which allows it to enter a marketplace, which makes it easier to buy, to sell, to trade, and to track. So that is all in all an NFT. Okay, it's still a little bit confusing, but I want to back up a second. So you're saying like a dollar can be exchanged for a dollar. A dollar can also be exchanged for an apple. A Bitcoin can be exchanged for a dollar. Like, so you're saying that's what makes that fungible. I don't know. I really don't. You can't say you don't know. You're supposed to be an expert. No. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. I already warned him. I'm not editing this, but that's that's true. Like a fun, something that is fungible can be exchanged for. No, because an NFT can be exchanged for all of okay, that. Okay, so too. then you clearly don't know what fungible means. So no, let's... fungible is replicate. Rep. You can replicate something fungible. You cannot replicate something non-fungible. You totally googled this and took the dollar example from Google. I didn't. I took the Bitcoin example from something else, but not the dollar, but it's the same thing. Okay, so what, this isn't explaining it. I think we need to start with the breakdown of fungible and non-fungible. Oh, no, we don't. What does the word non-fungible mean? It's not easy to exchange or mix with similar goods or assets. It's one of a kind. So that's the beauty of an NFT. And the reason why NFTs have taken off in the digital world for digital art, for example, because forever it was impossible to claim ownership of anything more or less digital, especially like a picture of something, right? That you had on your computer. But NFTs now have given you the ability to claim ownership of a specific, say, image, photo, art creation that just lives on your computer. So, yeah, I mean, it gets a reputation of just being JPEGs, but the NFT aspect of it just takes that a little bit further and a little more stake of ownership of of that item. Okay, this is still incredibly confusing, and I want to break this down. Uh, So I think we have to start off by saying, okay, an NFT is something that is, let's say, one of a kind, and the token aspect means that it is digital, right? Yes or no? Yes. Are you not sure? I'm not sure. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, th- I thought you prepared for this. Because you had one job. It's a non, okay, an NFT, I'm reading this from Google, from Wikipedia, so I'll source my information. An NFT is a non-fungible token that is a non-interchangeable unit of data stored on a blockchain. So I, so what would you, how would you explain non-interchangeable unit of data? It's one of a kind, you own it. There's only one out there. Okay, so that's, that's the fungible side of it. So let's say I take, let's say I create. Fungible is interchangeable. What for what? Interchangeable for what? My dollar is the same as another dollar. Okay. In terms of its value. So let's say I created a digital image that I made of Goofy and Microsoft Paint. And I put that on the blockchain, which is like an, I like to describe that as like an online marketplace. That picture of Goofy that I created is tied to me. It's tied to my digital identity. There is only one of those out there that I created. And that is what makes it an NFT. Sure. 
right? And what makes it unique that it's on this blockchain is that whatever happens next with that NFT is recorded. So it will always come back to me as the owner, but then it will also show the history of who bought it, who sold it, who bought it, who sold it, who bought it, who sold it for eternity. Right. Whereas if in the real world, world, I took that picture I drew of Goofy and I sold it to a stranger, there's no ledger that records that, that is accessed by anybody, correct? Right. Correct? Right. Okay. So that is what makes an NFT. An NFT is that it is a digitalized piece of unique something because it doesn't have to be a JPEG. It could be something that is then stored in this online world called the blockchain and everything that happens to it is recorded. So it doesn't necessarily, necessarily say Jen Glance created this, but it's my username. It's who I am on this blockchain. Correct? That's right. You have nothing else to say about that no i mean you said oh it could be more than just a jpeg i was on StockX today like a popular marketplace for sneakers and i realized they sell nfts now and what they are are fractionalized ownerships of a pair of sneakers so you can buy an nft which gives you one 250th of an ownership of a sneaker which is held in a vault and i imagine i guess if everyone wanted to sell it they could use that one out of 250th ownership as a vote um, they could do just that, but that is another example of how an NFT applies in the world beyond just digital art. Right? Yeah, I think it's important to remember, and I think a lot of people don't realize this, because like when I first saw Adam get in this world, I was like, are you literally buying like random weird pictures for all of this money? And those are what NFTs are, but NFTs are so much more than like a cartoon image or a picture or like a, a GIF or like a video clip. There's so much more to it. So I think we should give some different use cases and examples of NFTs and that StockX is cool. I was saying before this that I was reading an article in the Wall Street Journal about like female celebrities getting into the NFT world and Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher, they created an NFT, which they created like, let's say a thousand NFTs and each one is different, but each one gives a person access to the same thing, which is this animated TV show they have. You can only watch the TV show if you are an NFT holder. So it's almost like a digital ticket it's a digital subscription to netflix something like that and there's only a thousand of them sort of thing so that's another example did you read about coachella's nfts yeah so coachella also has nfts where if you buy into however many nfts they have let's say they offer a thousand nfts you get different perks one of the perks of the the coachella nft is that you get unlimited access to coachella that's a certain forever. level of that NFTs yeah forever that so with, that's yeah. one thing so i like to think of nfts as yes digital Digital art is like the bottom level. Sure, you buy the board ape, the picture of the ape, and you hold that and great. But a lot of NFTs out there come with perks. That's why a lot of big brands like Adidas and Coachella and a lot of like big fashion brands like are Budweiser, Coca Cola, they all have NFTs as well. And a lot of them give you access to something. So, what's another example of a company who has an NFT and what do you get access to it? Well, I just wanted to make a point about the digital art. I think there is some art aspect to this, or just like you said with the ticket. When I used to go to New Jersey Nets games growing up, I would keep my ticket stub because it had some sentimental value to me. But then it was also something fun to show my friends that I went to that event. It's the same thing with owning an NFT. Yes, you may buy it for all the experiences that it unlocks, but you also have a place where you can show it off too, that you own it. So yeah, I really think that's fun. a great example because there's some people out there, I was not one of them, but there's some people out there who like hold on to Broadway playbills and tickets to concerts and all of these things. And rather than having the paper ticket, all of those events could make them NFTs and then you store them in your, you know, what would you say, your profile? Yeah. And then it's, and then, and you share that with anybody and anyone can see all the different things you hold. So another use case of NFTs that I think really makes sense for me to understand this even more and wrap my head around it is eventually, I think a great use case for NFTs are concerts or our, our ticket sales people who can sell them. So for example, yeah, artists, no, artists, like right now, okay. Artists, so right yeah. now, like I want to go to the, the Justin Bieber concert, right? So 
right now you would go to Justin Bieber's website. You would be, let's say you were the first person to get the tickets to the concert. You'd buy a ticket on Justin Bieber's website. Great. You bought the ticket. And then let's say you can't go. Then you would put it on StubHub or Ticketmaster or some other third party reseller, re reseller and you would sell the ticket. And then another person would buy it and X, Y, and Z. But one of the things that's a huge money loss in this situation is the artist or whoever is selling the ticket only gets the fee from that first sale. So Justin Bieber's tour company only gets money on that ticket being sold once. So if I buy a ticket to his concert for $50 and then I flip it for $5,000, they don't get any of that money. So what they could do with an NFT is they could make all the tickets NFTs and you, they'd, they'd release, let's say, you know, 100,000 tickets or whatever they are, and people would buy the, the NFT, which is a ticket. And then if they can't go, they would sell the NFT. And the cool part here is that NFTs come with royalties sometimes. So that, that means the original... You build the royalties into the NFT. Right. So that means the original creator can say, hey, every time this NFT is sold, I want X percent of that sale. And you write that in the contract when you create the NFT. So Justin's Bieber tour company could say, okay, Okay, yeah, tickets are $50, these NFTs are $50, but every time someone flips it and sells it, we get 10% of that transaction for life or for the first time or whatever it is. So it's a huge no, it's money life. generator. Yeah, it can be changed. It's a huge time. money generator for a creator or a ticket salesperson or anybody. And this is something that can't happen necessarily in the real world right now. Because well, if I could flip a ticket on the street or on a website and Justin Bieber's tour company doesn't get anything from that. Right, and I think a lot of actual artists that paint beautiful things on canvases and you know ultimately blow up and get famous, maybe even after their death, they don't necessarily benefit at all from that popularity of their early work as much as say they should. And what Jenny you know, is saying as an example is very true. Artists are doing very, very well, whether it's a musician, whether it's you know, a cartoonist, whether it's you know, whoever it is, are uh, benefiting from this decentralized nature of NFTs where there's less middlemen involved in the process and more of a direct sort of relationship between you and, and all the transactions and obviously that artwork in the first place. So the nft that i've made and sold is a great example of how literally anybody could do this and i want to talk a little bit about that before i ask adam some more questions but i wanted to try out this whole nft selling process so basically what i did was i thought of something okay what could i give a person access to that would be valuable to them so i took my coaching services for example usually it's about 250 dollars for one hour of coaching so i decided to take that and make it into an nft so what I was gonna do is offer one NFT. Now, usually people offer collections of hundreds or thousands, but I offered it just one NFT just to try this process out. So I created the NFT and basically said, you, if you buy this NFT and I set the price really low because I wanted to make it accessible, it basically says you have two choices. You could buy the NFT and redeem it for an hour of coaching. And once you redeem it, it can never be sold again. It's called being burned, it would be burned. It's never sold again. And you would get your hour of coaching and that would be that or you could buy the NFT and hold it. And let's say something happens to me, I get more famous or I get more in demand. You can then flip that NFT and sell it for more whenever you want. And it's almost like a money-making opportunity for that person as well. Now, the other cool thing about that is they could also just hold on to the NFT and use the coaching session whenever they want. So there's a lot of power in that. So you can sort of see just based on that example of the many different routes a person can take when they're selling an NFT. Now, I didn't want anything to be a barrier of entry for me to do this, and I'm not an artist, and I you know, didn't know really what to do. So I went on canva.com, which is completely free, and I created like a really lame, boring graphic that basically said like, one hour of coaching with Jen Glantz, because I wasn't selling digital art, I was selling basically like a ticket to a coaching session. So that's what I did. And I can share more details of how I put that on the blockchain and how I, I did all that, but that was a cool way of sort of getting into the NFT space. And somebody did buy it, a person that I did not know bought it. In Australia. In Australia, she followed me on Instagram. It was really, really cool. And she hasn't redeemed it yet. And that's also cool because 
you know, it's a cool way for especially solopreneurs like me to have people and like you're almost investing in my career. She's almost saying, hey, by holding on to this, if Jen gets more, you know, famous or whatever it is, she could potentially make a ton of money selling that coaching session. And not only will she make money, but I will make royalties off that sale too. So it benefits me. And that's sort of my personal example of how I created an NFT. Okay. Adam, hmm. what made you get into this world? Because you... I think I was probably attracted by the, the treasure hunt. I mean, it, it, no shame in saying it. It looked like you could you know, make a lot of money. I, I used to flip concert tickets for fun. Um, so I think that was probably my first interest in it. But then also, I saw the ability that... Um, I, I, I guess I saw a lot of people very excited about NFTs for a lot of other reasons. And I wanted to learn more about the deeper connections and the deeper uh, side of NFTs. It's funny because when people meet Adam and I, they think like I'm the entrepreneur, but really Adam is like the OG entrepreneur. He is, he is the one that should that has done a lot of cool things in his life. When he was like a kid in school, he used to like buy things on eBay and all these wholesale I was in sites. EBay Power Show when I was 13 years old. Which means he sold candy a lot. Necklaces, yeah, uh, he would like buy candy necklaces wholesale and like flip them at his locker and make yeah. money. I, like I remember like our first date, he told me this and I was like, dude, you are, oh, he also, this is the best part. He used to get books and then bring them to like the book signings and get the authors to sign them and then flip them on eBay. So yeah. I'd what, be in line, I'd have like a hundred books and the author would say, wow, it's so nice of you to come and get all these books for all your friends. And I was like, you know, a nice kid. I was very genuine about it. And it was hard, I guess. I felt a little okay. guilty. But. He once went up to Hillary Clinton with like a stack of 20 books, had her sign the books, and then he flipped them on eBay and made like a ton of money. Yeah, let's get back to NFT. Okay, stuff. but uh, what I'm saying is his curiosity for these types of trends and that truly inspired me to get into this because at first I was very critical as well, but it's been cool to sort of see this world unfold. Okay. Yeah, it's way more than just a money-making opportunity. Yeah, I think for me, I'm not looking to make money off of it. I'm looking to learn it because who knows? It could. I always say it could be the next best thing or it could be the next like thing that just passes. But a lot of people are listening and they're probably wondering why they should care. So why do you think people should care about this? I think you want to find a project that <laughs> you care about personally there's so many different reasons that you can care about nfts as a whole it's a like very what? general word like what i mean people purchase nfts to take part in games they take part like virtual games they purchase nfts to just have a photo um, like we talked about they purchase nfts to get access to exclusive merchandise that they wouldn't be able to get access to if they didn't have that nft or purchase an nft which gives you, again, access to different events. And then a popular thing that a lot of people say is it gets you access to a great community as well. And that a lot of times is on Discord, which is where a lot of these communities are blossoming and everyone's chatting and you make a lot of friends. I mean, in these different NFT communities, there's a lot of people that really gravitate to each other. And um, a lot of these projects do a lot of different events on an ongoing basis. I mean, there's, you know, weekly live streams and whatever else where they're playing games together. And yeah, you, you can do it for the community and friendship of uh, everyone out there in the virtual world as well. Okay, like another cool example could be like, let's say I'm a pizza restaurant in like a local community. I can release all these NFTs out there and say, if you buy the NFT, you get unlimited free pizza and you also get access to this community I created called Jen's pizza lovers, right? And then I build a community of, you know, everyone who owns the NFT to come together and talk about pizza and become friends over the shared hobby. And obviously pizza is very niche, but like that could apply to anything, right? right. You, know and, you know, I think forever Kickstarter crowdfunding campaigns have been an amazing way for companies to gain access to capital to, to create something. And in return, you've gotten a, a, a one-off gift. Jen, you did this for your card game. You remember? You launched your card game on Kickstarter and you gave people gifts for their contribution. That was a one-time gift that those people received, whether it was a stack of cards or cards and flowers, whatever it was. This is another way of saying, you know, you can get access to capital by launching an NFT project where you're now new backers 
are very much, I guess, invested in your project and the success of it for and can benefit from it in the long run in a very different way than say what Kickstarter used to only provide. That yeah, I think it makes sense. So I think that totally makes sense. I think the only issue is a lot of people are still trying to figure out the NFT world. So it's a tough barrier of entry for people to All right, give an example. I'm a gym trainer. Why would I create an NFTs? So I would say, here's the thing, because like, I don't always, eventually I'm probably not going to need you anymore. So let's say you were a gym trainer. I would release 50 NFTs and each of those NFTs gives a person access to um, three group coaching sessions a month, one personal coaching, virtual coaching session a month, a nutrition plan, and also a community of everybody else who's currently in this weight loss fitness journey. So I buy the NFT, let's say I buy it for $350, I get all of this access. And then, hey, let's say one day I'm really in shape anymore and I don't really need you. And you became like the celebrity trainer and I, I could flip that NFT, let's say for $100,000. And that's like an extreme example, but that could happen. So that's a, that's a good use case, right? I think so. I, I would cap the number of times you would get training sessions. So a lot of these NFTs that are going down a similar route, um, they're giving access to one event every year for the next four years. And then you co you can keep the NFT in you know, perpetuity, but the redemption for events does end at some point. And there's still a lot of value in that, especially as it gets closer to the event and people really want to go. And then they'll buy the NFT from someone that can't go to that event, but yeah, that's a good example. Okay, let's say a person has never explored the NFT world. Where do they go first? Probably good to go to just, oof, that's a good question. I mean, OpenSea, and then you look Spell at Spell it. O-P-E-N. No, oh yeah, you're right. S-E-A. Dot. Com? No, it's dot I-O. Oh, it's dot I-O. Open, O-P-E-N-S-E-A dot I-O, and what is it? It's the most popular marketplace for NFTs and, you know, they're all built on the Ethereum blockchain and that's. Okay. So basically if you go to OpenSea.com, OpenSea.io, you can scroll through NFT yeah, collections. Look at collections, look at the most popular projects and then click on the project profile and then go to their Twitter and read about what they're tweeting about, what's going on, join a discord get to know it a little better. Okay, so let's say people want to just go visually see what the heck an NFT is. They can go to opensea.io. Where else can they go? What other sites have? What other sites? I forget them off the top of my head, honestly. I, OpenSea is like the big one. Where? You're fired as an expert. <laughs> I never promised, like, I guess. Okay, niftygateway.com dot com n i f t y gateway dot com open really is the biggest one that's yeah. the only one we've ever really used um rareable r a r i b l e but that's the best place to go you don't have to like create an account you can just simply explore what an nft collection is you'll get all of the details about what it is there and all the, the cool features that they offer again why i want to share this with you is because so many people are telling me they don't they don't understand NFTs, they can't wrap their head around it. And I don't want that to be a reason why you just stick a topic like this in the corner. You might as well learn it, understand it, be able to explain it to other people and then sit with it and maybe do nothing with it, but you don't want to fall behind with knowledge of interesting trends because you never know how it could enter your life. Yeah, I think the biggest and best thing that you could probably take away from this, listening to this is just like, Oh, okay, I understand how NFTs can make sense in the world if you didn't understand before. And then there's so much more that you got to get into and do it to really understand it. But hopefully this helped connect some of those dots and at least kickstart some learning around it. Or maybe it was just super confusing and this is another reason why you don't ever want to learn about NFTs, but I really never hope listen not. To us talk about NFTs ever again. <laughs> well, keep listening to this podcast. I beg you. <laughs> okay, where where can people oh, find out about you, Adam? I love that question. I don't know. I don't really post very much on social, but <laughs> that just kills her. Adam Kossoff on Instagram. 
Adam Kossoff on Twitter, AdamKossoff.com, which needs to be updated. Uh, all of those. and Adam and Kossoff in real life. You can come to our Brooklyn. Yeah, Je- just watch Jen's stories at Jen Glance, and you'll see me make appearances here and there. Okay. It's probably the best way to know what's going on in my life. I really hope you have an answer to this question. If not, I'm going to be pissed. Fill in the blank. You're not getting any younger, so... Buy an NFT. Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, And join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.